From version 2, Mamba has included a shape tracker, which allows us to more easily apply tracking data to roto shapes. Previously, if we wanted to track a shape, we'd double click a shot, go to shapes, create shape, and then we go to the tracker and insert a tracking point to derive the movement data and then apply it back to the shape. From Mamba 2, all that happens in one go with these buttons here. So as you can see, when I press the Go Both button, what Mamba does is populates the area of the shape with multiple tracking points, or a cloud of trackers. Then it averages together all the movements that are detected by those trackers, and depending on what we have selected here, generates positional, rotational, and scale information that goes into the properties of the shape, which are then shown on this keyframe editor here. We can choose which parameters the tracking data creates, and we can also choose whether the scale is allowed to break between X and Y, so that width and height can be scaled independently. Round is an alternate algorithm for the placement of the trackers, which works better with some types of shots than others, and then fine is a trade-off between speed and accuracy. It's useful to know how Mamba works with multiple shapes with tracking. So if I just add in a second shape here. If I have a single shape selected and hit track, it's that shape that gets tracked. So selecting one at a time is how we can get independent tracks for different shapes. If however we either select multiple shapes or select no shapes at all, what Mamba will do is it will pay attention to the alpha channel that's been created and use that as the area in which to populate the cloud trackers. So this won't be a very practical example, but if I hit go both, you can see what will happen. Trackers are placed in both of those areas. And if I switch to the tracking menu, we can see them there. But of course, the shapes actually follow neither of those objects because the movement that's being created is an average of all those tracking positions. Perhaps a more useful demonstration of multiple shapes would be this. Let's say, for example, within here, there were reflections or people moving around that was going to upset the trackers. Well, what we could do is use the Boolean functions of the shapes. So for example, to create a holdout area. So now my alpha channel looks like this because I've put a subtractive shape in the middle, which means now when I hit track, you'll see that the trackers do not populate that black area. We can also use multiple shapes to help us in scenarios where the area that would be good to track isn't necessarily the area that we want to draw a shape. So, for example, if I wanted this shape over here to move the way this cable car does, well, the way to do that is if I use this shape as the area to track, so I've double clicked it and hit go both. So that's now tracking just that shape, leaving this one alone. Well, the movement data for this shape, once it's selected, comes up here. So I can just hit control C for copy and go to the other shape so its parameters come up and go control V. So now what we'll have is those two shapes moving together. So let's move on to a more practical example and go into a bit more detail with the tracking side of things. So let's do a roto for this middle Thames barrier. So I'm going to start by creating a shape and in fact I will speed this bit up just so you're not completely bored watching me rotoscope, which is probably not the world's most interesting thing to watch. Okay, so basic rotoscope, which of course isn't moving with our shot yet. So I'll hit my go both, although of course I'm at the beginning of the shot, so I could just hit go forward, and we'll get our basic track. Now if we go into the tracking menu, we can look at some more advanced features in here. So what's been added to the tracking interface to enable the shape tracker is firstly this shape mode here. So you can see as I turn it off, it goes back to the traditional trackers, the squares with their circular reference points. And with shape mode on, the trackers become the little crosses, but also we can see the shape imported into the tracker so we can see what we're doing. Now you can also see that some of the tracks have gone small and gray. And that's because this function here is on enable pruning. We can see from the tracks that have been created from those two trackers that they're wildly different to 
the average of the cloud. So Mamba is taking the decision that these trackers are unlikely to be of any use to us. And given that they do that, it's probably a good choice. So the dark gray ones actually aren't contributing to our track. However, we can also, if we want to, individually select trackers and manually remove them if we think they're not contributing properly to our track. If we have made a manual intervention, when we track again, turn off populate on start, because otherwise that will simply replace trackers wherever Mamba thinks they should be. So that gives us the basis of our track, but we can see obviously, certainly look at this front end, the shape is slipping away from our object. So it's important to recognize what this shape tracker is and what it is not. What it does do is take an average of all these cloud trackers and give us 2D positional, rotational and size changes. What it doesn't do is it's not a planar tracker, so it doesn't recognize this as a plane, and it's not an edge detector, so it isn't changing the shape to follow an edge. But what it does do is give us the underlying motion. And because the motion is applied to the offsets for the shape, as opposed to keyframes for the shape, it allows us to keyframe a shape change on top of the tracking motion. So with auto key on, we can see that if I were to make a change to this point here, you can see the tracking maintains, but the shape change is my animation. So let's just try and tidy up this roto. Let's just fix up these points. So again, just speed this bit up just so you don't get too bored. Okay, so that's now just with two keyframes. So if I just go to multiply with the alpha, you can see we've already got a reasonably good roto just to be going on with. Certainly it could take a little bit more detail, of course, but for purposes of demonstration, hopefully you get the idea that I'm using the shape tracker to give me the underlying motion, but also any high frequency motion, such as wobbles and shakes, the things that are normally quite awkward to rotoscope around because they're the things that need frame by frame rotoing. This roto, as you saw, has been made with just two keyframes. So of course, at the moment, I've used the shape tracker and the cloud tracker in order to manipulate a shape. But actually, the tracking data that's created can actually be used in the traditional way as well. So for example, if I were to add on to here Comp 3D, I'm just going to set its background to be solid, and then Axis 2 will use the same data to stabilize. So now what we can see is that cloud data is being used to create the normal stabilization data. The upside of using cloud information for stabilizing and tracking is that you're benefiting from many trackers all averaged together rather than relying on any one tracker that might wobble or lose its position. So this certainly helps with perhaps grainy or noisy footage where individual trackers might wobble. On the other hand, the downside is you're dealing with an average of many trackers. So if there is a particular point that you need to lock down, you're still probably better off manually inserting a tracker at that point. So that was the shape tracker in Mamba that we can use to help us speed up with our rotoscoping work.